Hi, and welcome to Good Shepherd's Discipleship Academy. Uh, this is our podcast on Discipleship 101. I'm Pastor Jonathan, and today I'm going to be your host as we talk about uh, what it means to be a disciple. Um, so we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am joined here by our Director of Youth and Family Ministries, Kai Thoreau. So welcome, Kai. Thank you. I am uh, glad to be part of this conversation. Fantastic. So as I said, we're talking about discipleship uh, today. Um, and uh, when I think about discipleship, um, I, I think people use different language and words for it that maybe aren't always helpful. When we uh, want to ask the question, uh, are we a disciple or whatever, uh, people always tend to ask it or frame it in the, uh, the language of, uh, are you a believer? Um, or do you believe in Jesus? Or even in the South, we kind of get the, um, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Which I don't know about you. Or into your heart. Or into your heart, yeah. I don't know about you, but I mean, for me, growing up as a Lutheran, that was a really strange question because mm -hmm. we just didn't um, use that kind of language right. uh, at right. all. Um, and, and all of that may well be fine, but to me, that always couches our relationship to Jesus in like intellectual knowledge right. things. The which, headspace. The headspace, yeah, which is good and important. I don't want to mm -hmm. say that there's no room for the headspace stuff, but it doesn't really get to a lived experience or a lived reality. That if right. we're um, following Jesus, that that means that our life is patterned somewhat on his. Right. Um, that's a lot of words to kind of <laughs> uh, enter into this idea of what discipleship is, but um, but Kai, I think you're here today to help us break down just what discipleship looks like and what our response might be to yeah, someone that says, yeah, you know, sure. have you accepted Jesus or whatever it might be. Um, so you're, you're yeah, here to help so, us. Yeah, um, so I'm definitely going to do my best to help us kind of try to understand uh, what discipleship uh, is and looks like. Um, and uh, I think one of the best places that we can start uh, is by acknowledging that we can learn all about discipleship uh, from the master discipler, uh, Jesus himself, uh, by simply reading our Bible. Uh, so today I did bring... Um, our, our Lutheran Study Bible, which uh, we like to give out here in this congregation, um, because we're going to be cracking it open and using it. So um, we're going to be talking about some of Jesus' life and looking at the model that Jesus uh, gives to us in his mm -hmm. life and in his teachings. So um, one of the things that, if you look at all four of the Gospels, and you see Jesus uh, in his ministry, uh, one of the things that you're going to notice is that Jesus focuses uh, on this pattern of what we call the three different relational dimensions of life. Uh, so basically, everything in Jesus' ministry can be boiled down to relationships, and uh, specifically in three different areas. And those three areas are uh, relationships with God, relationships with uh, his disciples, the people who he was close with, um, the people that he cared and loved for uh, very much, and then his relationship with the rest of the world. Uh, and so uh, as we look at discipleship, we want to look at those three different relational dimensions of life and how our, uh, our own lives, how are we doing, how are we balancing those three dimensional areas of life. And if we're able to find a good balance, we're going to be great disciples by default. Uh, so if we start with uh, focusing, being able to look at... Um, the different er those three different areas of life, uh, discipleship will come naturally. Uh, it's something that we don't have to really think about or worry about if it becomes second nature uh, to us. And that, as Christians, I believe is what we're kind of called to. Um, so it, if we're to live a successful life of discipleship, uh, it's one that uh, is indeed a balanced life, I guess you could say, um, as, as it relates to these three relational dimensions uh, of life. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's great to think about it in terms of relationship. Because again, like we said, when it's in the headspace, that can be really scary to think about. Again, not that we're saying that's unimportant, but it's just scary to think about because uh, it's like a test, like a got to get the right answer or whatever. But relationships right. I can kind of understand because I have relationships with you know my parents and, and my friends and other people. So it, it kind of brings it to a level where I feel like I can Right. It, uh, right. a little bit better. So is there an example um, that you can point us to as a starting point of where Jesus models um, 
uh, living this life. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Cool. Um, we're gonna. Uh, I'll read this this one story. Uh, we're actually gonna open up to Mark, uh, the first chapter of Mark, which is in the New Testament. Uh, if you're in our Lutheran Study Bible, uh, it's on page one thousand six hundred and sixty. Again, that's one thousand six hundred and sixty. Um, and we're gonna look at uh, Mark chapter. Well, actually, I think I lied. It's actually going to be on page 1,662 where we're going to start. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 35 to 39. And as you hear me read this story, what we're going to invite you to do is, can you identify those three different relational uh, components of life? So uh, where Jesus is in relationship with God, where Jesus is in relationship with uh, his disciples, and where Jesus is in relationship with the outside world. Um, so... Here we go. Uh, this is uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For this is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in the synagogues and casting out demons. So in this story, um, in verse 35, for example, Jesus is, uh, we hear Jesus is investing uh, time into his relationship with God. He's gone into a secluded place to pray. Um, and so he's investing time in his relationship with God. Um, in verses 36 to 38, Jesus is investing in his relationship with his disciples. Uh, they come and they look for him saying, everyone's looking for you. And Jesus is like, okay, you are looking for me. Um, and Jesus spends time investing with his disciples. We don't get to hear about all the conversations that Jesus has with his disciples. Uh, but I think it's pretty safe for us to um, assume that Jesus probably has more conversation with them than just simply yeah, you were looking for me, and now we need to go to this other neighborhood, mm -hmm. like, like to this neighboring towns, because this is what I'm here to do, is to preach to the world. Um, and to, uh, as it says, he's proclaiming the message of God and casting out demons. Um, and so we get to hear in verse 39 that Jesus goes and does exactly that. He goes out into the world and uh, proceeds to proclaim the good news about God to the hurting world. Uh, and so we get all three relational aspects of that in those four verses uh, in Mark. And you can read any section of the Gospels. Uh, and some, in some sections, it's longer than four verses for all three of those components to come to light. Uh, some of them, it's a full chapter. Uh, some of them, it's as short as three or four verses where you get to see all three of those relational aspects come into play. Uh, but time and time again, there's this repeating pattern. It's a great lens for us to read the Gospels through. Uh, to help us understand what a life of discipleship looks like, because we're trying to model our lives after Jesus as disciples who follow Jesus. I think that's fantastic, because, um, and, and I, I like that you pointed out that there's more than, than one place that, the, that, that we find right. this in. Um, I think that's an important thing to think about as Lutherans wrestle with how we engage uh, in Scripture and what it calls us to do. Is so often it's not just like, oh, we just pick up this one little verse, and that sounds really neat, we're going to do that. But we're noticing a pattern that, that right. happens right. Uh, throughout Scripture. And you said, you mentioned there are some other uh, places where you see that pattern. Yeah, I mean, you can you can find it throughout all of the Gospels. Uh, but a few that uh, we want to highlight that you could take a look at if you really wanted to. Um, in the book of Luke, uh, Gospel of Luke, uh, I'd love for you to check out chapter 6, verse 12. All of it happens in one verse. Um like, all three of those things happen in one verse. That could be like a life verse for you. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot that happens there. Um, and then, uh, if you want to look at an example where it takes an entire chapter for all three of those aspects to come into play, uh, check out Mark chapter 9. Um, and then, uh, one other story that we can absolutely take a look at that um, uh, is crucial to our belief system as Christians is Jesus' crucifixion. Um in that crucifixion story, you have this whole time, uh, like all three relational aspects come into play while Jesus is on the cross. Um, so Jesus is, of course, he, he prays to God, he, he lifts up his voice to God, asking God, why have you forsaken me, uh, those kind of things, while well, he's on the cross. He then has a conversation 
with uh, Mary and uh, some of the disciples and talks about how you are now uh, his son and you are now his mother. Um, and so it's talking about like those close relationships so that that, uh, that component uh, is really important there. And then it, almost immediately following that, Jesus um, has a great conversation with uh, the other thieves who are uh, being crucified alongside Jesus. So in a way, that's Jesus reaching out to the hurting world um, and ministering in that way, uh, in a relational way. Uh, it's not just a dismissive way. It's all relational. That's cool. That's really cool. So I want to circle back to this idea of balancing things because you've yeah, got three tough. relationships. It's and tough. I know... I mean, I struggle with balance in my life. I just got all the little hats I wear, and maybe you know, our <laughs> watchers and listeners have, have hats and different things they balance. So, oh, so yeah. talk about that balancing these three dimensions. Of yeah, so when I actually, um, yeah, so balance is so important. Um, and it's not something that will just happen on its own in our lives. It's actually something that we have to work at. Um, so that's what the challenge of discipleship is all about, is it's not something that you can say, okay, I've done this, and now I'm done. Because uh, as soon as you think you're done, your life is going to become unbalanced as it relates to these three different relational aspects and so uh, or dimensions of life. And so it takes time and energy, um, and you need to be intentional about it. Um, so uh, one of the examples that I can think of uh, of a time when I felt the most balanced in my life was actually in eighth grade. So going back all the way to my time in middle school, um, I actually felt... Th like I had the most balance in my life at that moment in time. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with, I was able to find, uh, I had a lot of peace as it related to, um, I felt really good in my prayer life. I felt like I had invited God into my life um, in a meaningful and a relational way. Um, and then I was able to uh, spend a lot of time, I was spending a lot of time and energy um, with my friends um, and with, my parents, uh, and with uh, the people I was close with uh, in, in my own church community at the time. And uh, so that was kind of like that, uh, that, that focus of, uh, the relational focus of being with the people that I was, I was close with. I, I had, I didn't feel like I was lacking in any of those areas. I had a great relationship with my mom and my dad at that point in time. As good as it could in probably be. great. That's amazing. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as good as it could probably be with my sister, uh, who's two years younger than me. Um, and then I have felt like I was doing great with my friends, uh, especially my friends at church, uh, because uh, one of the things, too, that we see with Jesus as he lives out his life with his disciples is it's uh, spending time, intentional time, in, in that community of faith uh, is really important. Um, and then uh, it was actually through my community of faith that it allowed me to have opportunities to um, have a relational component with the outside world. Uh, I spent some time... Uh, helping with uh, like food drives um, and those kind of things. I was also involved in some organizations at school that helped reach out to uh, the people in our community that needed it. Uh, and I just felt like I had, uh, like I knew a few of the people by name at the local food bank. Um, so uh, two of the people that worked there and one person that was a regular there. Um, and so it was, I felt like I had pretty good relational um, collateral, so to speak, with all three aspects of my life, and I felt really balanced and just at peace with the world uh, during a time when a lot of my peers were not uh, at peace. Um, or it was obvious for me to see, like now looking back, where their lives were unbalanced. Now that, that time when I felt the most imbalanced in my life did not last long. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, as a youth director, I do church work professionally, and my life is oftentimes not in balance. Um, it's really easy for me to... Uh, focus on the those relationships of the people I care about and maybe at the same time I'm focusing on the relationships of the people in the outside hurting world and my prayer life isn't great um, so it's uh, it, it's definitely a challenge to find that balance and to get to a place where you feel like you have balance in your life it's definitely not easy but it's definitely a calling uh, that I think we're all called to but not only are we called to it we are um, encouraged, I think, in the words of Scripture and as we look at Jesus' life, um, to do everything we can to find that balance. Because when we are in balance, that means that we are most attuned to God and what the needs of the world are around us. 
just what being a disciple is all about. Cool. Thanks for sharing that story. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And, and thanks for your honesty. I think so often we uh, we don't put our authentic selves in and we, yeah, we, yeah. we go, oh, well, this is Jesus stuff. We've got to, like, have this nailed down and we can't struggle and that sort of thing. So I appreciate your honesty and authenticity uh, yeah. and sharing. Uh, and it, it made me think that, that one thing I, I wrestle with as I wrestle with, like, uh, you know, faith and discipleship and all those things is it's, it's really a practice. Right. Um, so it's not something that we've got figured out. Right. Uh, people probably think that, like, you know, you and I being professional church workers, we've got it figured out. And no. <laughs> trust us, we don't have it figured out, <laughs> no. like, at all. But um, but it's it's a practice thing, and sometimes you're a little bit better at it, and sometimes you struggle a little, right. a little bit more. Right. Um, and it, a lot of, honestly, too, it depends a lot about what's happening in your life at that given oh, yeah. time. And so I don't think it's bad to realize, like, realizing that you're out of balance is a good thing. It's a healthy thing. Yeah. Um, so being able to name and claim that you're out of balance is great. Um, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're, like, God's not looking down on you in any way, shape, or form. I'm not looking down on you. You're not going to look down on anybody <laughs> for it. Uh, because the same things happen to us. Yeah. Um, and I, I know we've had some conversations since I've been here um, mm-hmm. and working with each other where we're like, you know, I'm really struggling with some stuff right now. Um, yeah. And uh, it's it's really important to to lean into the relationships that you do have with other people mm-hmm. uh, and with other communities. Because the other cool thing about uh, discipleship is that it's not just an individual thing. Um, like as you look at these three relational aspects, um, discipleship doesn't have to just apply to us as individuals. Uh, it's also a way for us to measure uh, and understand the effectiveness of um, and the healthiness, really, of the relationships that we have as maybe it relates to uh, our families, uh, how it relates to different groups that we might be involved with, some sports teams, uh, or even our ministries here at Good Shepherd. Um, we can take a look at how are our ministries doing and are we feeling like we're balanced in these three different areas. And if we're not, we need to name and claim it and then see what we can do to move forward to trying to become more in balance. Yeah, and I think that's so important that brings us back to relationships that again one of the mistakes people make a lot is that, that this whole faith discipleship thing is like an individual thing right. you know it's, it's me myself and jesus uh right. and, and oh, we'll yeah. figure it out but when we, we hear that a lot yeah we hear that all the time mm-hmm. but when we pay attention to just the various stories and scriptures even though we meet a bunch of individuals they're always individuals in community and right. almost everything that they're doing is out of and into and involved in community now, all of this is is is, is good, but um, I'm a big time visual, visual learner. I, oh, yeah. I, I have to like see things yeah. and visualize, and you know, I'm always like, okay, big picture. Let's <laughs> let's get the right. big picture. So, can you give me the big picture? Is there well, a visual I can get? Absolutely, so, I'd love to. Test. To uh, we're gonna move to this whiteboard <laughs> back here. Um, so, uh, to keep it as simple as possible, we're gonna use a triangle uh, to help us understand these three, because there's three different relational dimensions to life. And so we're going to, um, to discipleship too, and so we're going to use, use a triangle to help us understand um, this. And for the sake of this, uh, I'm going to draw three triangles here just to help us uh, be able to visually understand it just a little bit better. Uh, it's less, I could do it all in one triangle, but doing it on three triangles makes it a little bit easier to follow and understand. So each one of these triangles, we're going to focus on uh, these three different uh, dimensions of uh, discipleship. And so we're going to have an up on every single one of our triangles. Now the up is, uh, I'll put this down here, but our up equals uh, our relationship with God. And my handwriting is atrocious, so... I hope you can read it, or even see it from there, I don't know. Um, And then uh, we're going to have an in as one of our other points in our triangle. And the in component of our faith, uh, or of discipleship, of our relationships, is all about the people that you're close with and that you love. Um, uh, Specifically though, for being, uh, as we're talking about discipleship, it's all about that Christian community too. So it's it's who are you being, in, like the people you care about that happen to be part of a Christian community as well. Um, because we just kind of talked about the importance of um, 
yeah, the importance of being in community with one another. So this is in is the people we're close with. Ugh, this is hard to do. <laughs> Writing is a practice, just like discipleship. I need to remember to be in all caps because my <laughs> lowercase is really bad. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going to have an out part of our triangle. Now the out, I'm sure you could guess, is the, uh, our, our relationship with the world around us. Uh, that does not happen to encompass necessarily the people that we're close with, it's the outside hurting world, people we don't know on a, on a super close basis. So it's, um, I'm just going to put the world. So here we have uh, our triangles. And now these, these, are, these triangles can be maps for us uh, to use. So like oftentimes to see if, if I feel like there's far, a part of my life that is a little out of balance, um, a lot of times I'll draw a triangle and uh, try to put my own life, like inter, basically drop my life here and be like, okay, how am I doing with my relationship with God? Is it strong right now? Is it weak? Um, is there room for improvement? Um, almost always, there's, I feel like there's room for improvement in that area. My prayer life is not always the best. Uh, it's not the greatest. Um, and so that's always an area I know I can improve on. And so... Um, like going back to when I was in eighth grade, it wasn't just prayer. It was also one of the things I loved to do was uh, I was really into listening to like camp music, uh, like you listen to at Christian camps. Um, and also, uh, I don't know if you were familiar with the Wow CDs. Oh yeah. Um, that, like the I don't even remember what that stands for, but it's like these worship contemporary worship mm -hmm. CDs. Um, I would listen to them in my little Walkman. Um, the disc man, yeah, yeah the little disc. CD player. Y'all don't remember the disc man, <laughs> but that thing um, was amazing. Yeah, so this was before like iPods and things where phones were even were a, a, a big thing. Uh, so yeah, even, even iPods aren't a thing. I, I right. went to give my daughter an iPod yesterday so she could have music, and she's like, "What's that?" And I was like, "It's it's a phone that doesn't make a call." So even iPod is now dated. It's, it's so, out. Yeah. Yeah. There we yep. go. I like that. So, and I find this really helpful because like, I love some Doritos. That's one oh, yeah? of my favorite things ever. So yeah. I'm, I'm picturing a Dorito <laughs> here, and I'm, I'm asking myself, how's my Dorito chip? Oh, there and, you go. And sometimes an end has been, like, you know, bitten off, and sometimes it's been kind of rough, and the whole thing is just kind of yeah, it, shattered. Kind of, yeah. kind of shattered all to pieces. Um, so I, I, I like this. This is really helpful. I'm going to picture my, my Dorito um, from now on. <laughs> but uh, why are there three triangles? Yeah, so, uh, so we can see what happened. Where I'm going to show you what happens. Whenever we have one of these, each each of these three components is weak. So we'll have two co two strong components, and uh, one weak one. So for our second triangle here, um, we'll draw a dotted line so we can see the difference between them. It's not spaced out very well. At least that's for me anyway. If it's not helpful for you, but our second one is going to be that we have a really strong in still. So we feel like we're doing good with our relationships with the uh, uh, our. Christian community around us, the people that we care and love for, uh, and we feel like we're doing a great job with our out. We're, we're serving other people, we're uh, meeting needs in the community, uh, we're doing a great thing, like we're doing a lot of great stuff with the world, but uh, we happen to have a pretty poor uh, relationship with God at this moment in time. Um, and so what's going to happen when this happens is that because this is weak, the focus is going to come down this way. And uh, what's going to happen is that uh, you're gonna, it's going to lead to burnout. Um, because what you're doing is you're, put, you're doing all this in your own strength. And so we have burnout over here. We have ineffective over there. Um, so if we don't rely on God and we don't put a lot of focus on our relationship with God, everything that we're doing... We're not really doing it for God. Really, the reality is, if you want to get down to the, the brass tacks of it all, even if you're doing great things for the community, you can do things for other people. But if you're doing them for other people without this faith component relationship with God, a lot of times what happens is it leads to burnout because we're focusing on ourselves mm -hmm. and how we feel when we help other people. Uh, and so rather than uh, just doing it 
out of the goodness of our hearts as disciples are called to do. Um, we're doing it so that we can feel better about ourselves, which a lot of times we all do this. We all go through these moments where uh, if we continue down this path of not putting much stock in our relationship with God, we're just going to get burned out. Yeah. Uh, and that happens for us too um, in, yeah, in, the in, in the church. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really common for, for uh, people in ministry uh, to feel burned out because there's so much focus put on the in and the out. A lot of times we don't have a lot of energy. Uh, we don't feel like we have a lot of energy to be able to put into this up yeah. uh, relationship with God. And so, um, yeah, if we don't have the, a strong focus on that relationship with God, it's going to lead to burnout. Even if the other two are strong here, it's going to lead to burnout. So our last one, uh, let's say we have uh, our strong up and our strong out this time. But we do have, we happen to have a weak in. So we don't really feel like we're doing much with the people that we care or love. Um, we're just uh, really focused on our relationship with God and the world, and we're kind of doing it all on our own. Um, and when we get to that point, um, what we find happens uh, is that we begin to feel isolated. So if you've ever felt... again okay um if we ever feel um iso like if you ever get to the point where you're feeling isolated in the world then um chances are that you're in relationships in your life are not very strong uh, and that you might be wanting to put a little bit more of a focus and attention in that area cool so uh you, you mentioned that um it's kind of normal for us to have an area that we're strong in and uh, maybe an area that we're sort of okay in and then one that we're weak in. Right. Um, uh, what do we do once we're taking time to kind of evaluate um, yeah. the, na the, the, the status of our dream? Right, so that is a great question. Um, and the reality is that when we identify an area that's strong, we want to take a moment to pause and celebrate why it is that uh, we're, we're strong in that area. Um, it's important to celebrate those moments because if you're able to celebrate it and name that, hey, this is like I feel really strong about my up relationship with God right now. Um, it's it's a chance for us to uh, be able to identify later on when it feels weak what it was that helped to make it strong in the past. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, if we identify that things that are weak, the first part of solving any problem is identifying that there is one. So being able to identify the fact that one of our relational aspects of life is maybe a little bit weaker than we would want it to be, um, it's, it's a way, it's a time for us to sit down and reflect uh, and figure out why it's weak. And then only then can we begin to move forward to moving closer to finding a balance uh, in our lives. Um, it's, really it's really important for us to, whenever we get to the point of being able to find the balance in our lives too, um, it's important to, like, you'll feel better. Mm. Um, you'll, uh, like, everything will just start to click whenever you're, you're, you have a good balance in your life. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually pretty common for people to go through all three aspects of this triangle, where one's weak in one moment of the day. Like, in the morning, like, it could be really, it could be really weak one morning. Like, you could even break this down by the minute of the day if yeah. you wanted to. Uh, or you can expand it to be, to look at larger uh, aspects, uh, larger time frames of your life. Uh, more often than not, when I try to do this exercise, I look at how have I been the last two, three months, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even six months. How, how would I classify how I feel about each one of those up in and out relationships uh, in my life? I think it's so important to pause and have conversation with yourself um, at just various yeah. points, check in yeah. times, things like that, to just evaluate wh where you are. And, and definitely, I mean, celebration is something we sometimes don't do enough. Um, we, we can do a lot of negative talk no, uh, for about sure. ourselves. For sure, yeah. And, and instead to maybe think about how, how do we celebrate um, things really well. And then even to look at the things that we're weak in and not have it be negative talk, but even let that be a positive. To right, say, absolutely. Hey, this is an opportunity absolutely. here that I have. So um, this has really been great. Um, what haven't we covered or what do we need to recap on? Well, uh, I think... In a nutshell, um, just to highlight that discipleship is a journey um, and something that we're always striving to do and be. We're trying to be better disciples. We're, now, uh, like, we're never going to make it. 
Uh, we're never going to be the perfect disciple. Um, Jesus is the only one that can do that. Uh, but we can still strive. We're called to still strive to be the best that we can be, uh, the most balanced that we can be. Um, so it's a journey. It's not something that's easy all the time. Um, there's a lot of uh, self-reflection uh, that needs to happen in order for us to be the best disciples that we can be. Um, it's, and so part of discipleship isn't always about doing something either. Um, it's more of a state of being. Uh, I think that's really important to acknowledge that it's not a bunch of boxes that you can check off uh, to be like, okay, I'm more balanced now. Um, it's, it's a state of being that comes through practice um, and routine uh, reflection. It's totally cheesy, but we're not human doings. We're human beings. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> cheesy can be good, too. Yeah, it can, yeah. Um, so, again, um, you have questions about it. Just go back and look at Jesus' life. Um, Jesus' life is all full of these relationships. Jesus is totally relational in every aspect of his ministry. Um, he's got the relationship with God, with the up. He's got the relationship with his disciples, the excuse me, the in, and then he's got the relationship with the hurting world, the out. Uh, so always go back and look at Jesus' life. Uh, that's the way to go. Uh, but part of what I want to highlight, too, uh, is that uh, my life has never been always balanced either. Um, and I think, yeah, it's pretty, either. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty safe for us to say no one's has. Yeah. Um, it's not something that's, uh, it's very natural for us to be out of balance at any given time. Um, and it's something that we have to work towards constantly. Uh, which is part of our calling as Christians, is to be better disciples uh, than we were yesterday. Um, and that's all about trying to find those ba that balance uh, in our lives. Um, so on, those, on that note, uh, I think the last thing I want to add is just these things come and go in waves. Um, you're going to feel great one day. You're going to feel not so great maybe another. Um, and that balance is really hard to, to keep over a long period of time, and that's completely normal. Cool. So, yeah, it's, it's typical to have waves and ups and downs and all of that. And uh, I know if uh, anyone ever wants to chat, I'm open to, to chat. And I know you are as well. For so sure. um, please share with us uh, you know, how you're doing. Um, and, and we'll share how we're doing. And we'll be uh, really authentic um, yeah. and how our Dorito is <laughs> at this time. <laughs> Um, but this is the, the, the end of our, our podcast now. Um, on that kind of check-in thing, uh, we want you to remember part two of this seminar course is our Zoom meeting that's scheduled for Wednesday. So you'll get an uh, email. <laughs>